Today on Fletch Talks, more with actor and musician Robbie Rist. School Crossing is an intense drama about a retired police detective who takes a last stand against school shootings by placing himself in front of his local elementary school, upsetting the community and the political forces around him. School Crossing not only asks the important questions, it offers real, workable solutions to the recurrent tragedy of school shootings. School Crossing, in paperback and for Kindle at Amazon.com. Or save 15% when you buy this or any other Fletcher Roden paperback from FletcherRoden.com. Well, okay, so then also this year, last year, was uh, Sharknado. Sharknado, Sharknado. yeah. Uh, Big hit. Big huge hit. Yeah, it was actually, I mean, they kind of called it the summer movie of 2013, which is hilarious considering it was Pacific Rim was supposed to take over the world. And, you know, it did well. But uh, the, the word on everyone's lips was Sharknado. It's hilarious. I really think the title is what sold it. I, 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 it's what sold it for me. I was aware of the movie, you know, months before it came out. And when I first heard about it, I was, uh, uh, a friend of mine had gone to the, to, uh, the American film market, which is in Santa Monica every year. And I was meeting with him about maybe working on a thing. And, uh, after we were done with that particular piece of business, I said, so what did you see at the AFM this year? Anything cool? And, you know, we're both genre guys. And uh, he said, uh, yeah, I passed by the asylum booth, and all they had was this poster of a tornado with sharks in it. And on the poster it said, Sharknado, nuff said. And I, we both went, oh, my God, that's amazing, a tornado with sharks in it. Because I think to be a genre fan, it is to always be 10. And... A Sharknado is something that a 10-year-old would draw while they were bored at school. You know, it, it really, if, if you are geared that way, the mere word Sharknado would just make your head explode. So, and then I, it turns out that I, know, I knew the director from before. I've been working on music with uh, Anthony C. Ferrante for like the last 25 years. So... Uh, he, well, I was working on music with another one of his projects, and he said, uh, "Hey, I've been offered Sharknado." And, or, or actually, what he said was, "I've been offered this movie Sharknado." I believe at the time, not knowing that I knew what it was, and I, I, I jumped out of my chair, grabbed him by the lapels, and said, "You must make this movie." And every time I saw him after that, I'm like, did you get Sharknado yet? Did you get Sharknado? Did you get Sharknado? He's like, uh, you know, we're still talking. Uh, it looks like we're going to do it. I'm like, th- th- good. You need to do this movie and I need to be in it. <laughs> and you were in it. You were <laughs> and, the bus driver. And so, and so I, and, I mean, I was dead serious, but I was also joking. But as I tend to often do. But he actually ended up writing me a, uh, writing me a part for it. And uh, apparently it's one of the parts of the movie that gets talked about with great frequency. So, yay, you know, kind of cool. And I, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. You also did the music. I did. I did. Yeah. I did all the original songs that you hear in it, uh, are me. That's primarily what Anthony and I do with his movies is, you know, he does these low budget films like the asylum and stuff like, you know, with the asylum and, you know, he wants an Aerosmith song in the track and, and, he, they can't. They can't afford that. So he comes to me and goes, "I wanted uh, Aerosmith for this thing. Can we make a song that sounds like Aerosmith that fits in here?" So we sit and we write a song for it. So there's about seven of those, as well as the theme song of the movie. So you guys co-wrote. Yeah, 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 yeah. We co-write all that stuff because you know he likes to sing, and for him, it's you know I do this music thing all the time, and for him, he rarely gets to do music, and whenever he does it, he's like, "Oh man, this is just the best part of making movies," you know. Also, Sharknado, the, the Ballad of Sharknado is uh, going to be uh, uh, available on vinyl uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. So uh, we made a vinyl single of that and one of the uh, 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 instrumental songs from the movie. So, uh, you know, find me on my Facebook page, and if you're really interested in getting one, I'll let you know. Okay, that's good to know. Glad you got that out. Yeah. Uh, but a little bit more on the wrong dots. This is your, you're a, a musician and a songwriter, so this is like your band. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I've been singing and playing since, I mean, I think I, uh, I, I took a violin at three, 
you know, and my hands were too small, so that didn't work out. Then about five, I, I used to get up, like, when I was, like, in that age, and, you know, I'd get up every morning and just bang on the piano. Not that it sounded like anything, but I was driven to it, you know, and uh, so I played piano for a couple of years, then I found guitar and then bass and drums, so now I play a whole bunch of stuff, and, and I was a lead singer for about, oh, gosh, uh, close to 10 years with this band called Wonder Boy in the 80s. And, uh, you know, we, we tried really hard and, you know, it, it didn't go as far as we would have liked it. So in my disappointed state, I thought maybe my uh, my talents were best uh, uh, utilized in the service of others. So I kind of became a utility infielder for about, oh, a long time. Uh, whenever there was a band in town that, you know, if uh, they didn't have their bass player with them, uh, I could play one rehearsal with them and get out there and play. So for a whole bunch of years, I did that. And then after a while, I was like, all right, maybe I'll try my own th singing thing again. So we've been doing it for about a year. Uh, we have so far a song that's coming out on a Cheap Trick tribute record. And we did a, a video for... Uh, we do a cover of this 70s song called Timothy, which is uh, about cannibalism. It's a really great song. And so we did a version of that, and the video clip of it did really well. People were really interested. So uh, Karen Bassett, our, our guitar player, uh, she used to be in an 80s band called the Pandoras, who were a fairly successful garage rock band. And, uh, and you know, we were sort of joking about the whole touring thing. And she goes, you know, I got kids. I got to be home because at a certain point they're like, Mom – make me some food and you know you can't really walk away from that more with Robbie Riss next time on Fletch Talks if you'd like to be a guest drop me an email I'm Fletcher Roden <laughs> <laughs>